Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Wednesday, August 18th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of homicide division. Missing persons detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Lorman. My name's Friday. We'd gotten a report that a young mother and a nine-weeks-old baby had disappeared. We had to find them. Yeah, what is it? Police officers. Would like to talk to you if we could? Well, come on in. Got to take care of that kid. <coughs> Sounds like colic. Is that right? Yeah, that's what it is. Colic. Wonder if she has a hot water bottle. A what? You put a hot water bottle on the kid's stomach. Makes them feel a lot better. That's so? Mm-hmm. Both our kids had colic. <sighs> Baby's teething. Having a tough time. Oh. This is my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. We'd like to ask you some questions about one of your tenants. Oh? Which one? Uh, Mrs. Shipley. We understand she had apartment 207. Oh, yeah, she did. What about her? You know where we can get in touch with her? Ain't got any idea. When did you see her last? I guess it must have been a month ago. Possible you might be able to give us an exact date on that? If I could have done that, I'd have told you right out. I got nothing to hide. No, ma'am, we didn't say you did. Sounded like it. Sounded an awful lot like it. I'm going to be honest with you. Yes, ma'am. When Harriet first moved in here, we got along fine. She's all the time wanting me to tell her how to take care of the baby when it came. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Used to have our little cup of coffee in the afternoon. Chummy. Then all of a sudden it got different. How's that? Just did. Her husband was overseas in the Army. Guess Harriet missed him pretty much. At least she was always saying how she did. How she wished he could be here when the baby was born. Got terrible depressed. I see. Moody, you know. How long had her husband been away? Four months this time, someplace in the Pacific, I think. Army. Uh -huh. Harriet used to go out once in a while, go down at the show. Seemed like every picture she saw made her sadder. Just got so sad she couldn't take it no more. I guess that's why she did it. Did what? Tried to kill herself. Miss Shipley did? Yeah. I walk up there and I find her dying. That far from death's door. And when she comes home from the hospital, what thanks do you think I get? Well, I wouldn't know. Go ahead, ma'am. Nothing. She's mad. Says I should have left her alone. Let her done it. Come in here when she got back and read me off in words that I ain't used to hearing. I see. I got five kids, mister. They take a lot of time. And I ain't got enough to go running around after nobody who don't thank a person for saving their life like that. I called it quits right then. We was no longer friends. When did she make the attempt on her life, do you know? Last September. Don't remember the date. Think it was the second, maybe the third week. I'm not sure what day it was. Anyway, after I save her life, she's mad at me. She have any people here in Los Angeles, would you know? Never heard of her talking none. She's got a sister, I know that, but I don't know where she is. Don't think Harriet ever mentioned. What did she say to you when she left? Did she give you any idea where she was going? I didn't see her. She didn't even come by and say, so long, goodbye, take a jump, nothing. She just left. One night she's here, next morning she's gone. she get any mail while she was here, would you know? Yeah, once in a while she'd get a letter from her husband, and then there was some mail from San Francisco. Don't know who they was from. Did she take everything with her, all of her personal things? No, left it all here. Of course, it's not much, but it's all here. Where are the things? Downstairs in the basement. I got it all put away in case she ever comes back. It's going to cost her, too. Storage and for me to pack it. I told you it isn't much. Some dresses, a few clothes for the baby, phonograph, a couple records. That's about it. You can see them if you want. We'd like to take a look before we leave. Did Miss Shipley have any close friends that you know of? Not that I know of. She might have had some down at the Dream Palace. Where? Oh, where she worked. A dance hall downtown. She was a kind of hostess there. That's the name of the place, is it? The Dream Palace? Yeah. She might have had some friends down there. None of them came here, though. At least if they did, I never saw them. Would you know of any reason that she left in such a hurry? Mm, not right off. I can't think of one. 
There was something wrong with her, though, when she came back from the hospital. Y you know when she had the baby? She was worried about something. Would you know what it was? No. All I know is, when she'd been home a couple of days, she came down here and she asked me to do some work on the apartment. I told her if she wanted anything done, she could do it herself, after the way she talked to me. What'd she want done? Silliest thing I ever heard of. She didn't have anything to steal. Ma'am. She wanted all the locks on the doors changed. <laughs> Ten forty-six a.m. In the company of the apartment manager, Frank and I went down to the basement and we looked through the missing woman's effects. Other than the phonograph, some used baby clothes, cheap women's dresses, and an empty diary, we found nothing. There were no snapshots or letters to aid us in ascertaining where she might have gone. We asked Mrs. Fleischer to notify us in the event that she heard from the Shipley woman. Frank put in a call to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital and verified the story about the attempted suicide. 11.15 a.m. After we checked the phone book for the address of the Dream Palace Dance Hall, Frank and I drove out to the place. Yeah, what do you want? Police officers, we'd like to ask you some questions. My name is Smith. This is my partner, Sergeant Friday. Hi, my name's Lasnik. Won't shake hands? Got butter all over him. Sit down. Care for a sandwich? No, thank you. You do? There's all the making. Bread, butter, pickle, salami. Help yourself. No, thanks. Don't mind if I go ahead. Got a bunch of kids coming in at 3.30. Like to get the place cleaned up before then. No, sir. You go right ahead. What do you want to see me about? It's about one of your employees. Yeah? Which one? A girl named Harriet Shipley. Oh, yeah. I remember. She don't work here no more. Any idea where she is? Uh-uh. Ain't got the slightest. I ain't seen Nadine in about maybe six weeks. No, sir. You don't understand. We're inquiring about a Harriet Shipley. Yeah, I know. Told you I ain't seen her in six weeks. What's this about Nadine? Her club name. Oh. You see... Lots of the girls don't like to use their real names in case a fellow wants to get chummy away from here. It's easier if you don't know the girl's real name. Harriet used Nadine. We understand. We got a bunch of them. When one of the girls leaves, we put the name back in the hat. New girl picks it. Had 14 Nadines since we opened. I see. 27 Althea's. Yeah. Do you have any idea where the Shipley girl is? Nope. Check with her husband. He might know. We understood he was in the Army. That's right. He is. Overseas. He should know where his wife is, though. Ask him. Well, we'll probably do that, sir, but we thought maybe we could turn her up ourselves. There's been a missing report filed on her. Missing, huh? Who told it? Sir? Who told about her being missing? Report was filed by her mother-in-law. I told you, I ain't seen her in six weeks. Wish I could help you fellas out. The last time you saw the Shipley girl, she say anything about leaving town? No. Nope. Wouldn't be surprised, though. Why do you say that? Well, the poor kid was scared to death. Told me she wanted to get away. Do you know what she was frightened about? Yeah, Max Bender. That's what she was afraid of. Max. Who's he? Look, I'll tell you the whole thing. Be easier that way. One favor I gotta ask, though. Yes, sir. You won't tell Max I told you. He'd come up here and he could tear the place apart easy. He would, too, if he knew I'd told on him. You gotta promise me you won't tell him. All right, sir, we won't tell him. Go ahead, please. Well, Nadine, or Harriet, she came to work for me about a year and a half ago. Came in and told me she'd had some experience in a dance place in the Midwest. I don't remember the name right off. Probably come to me. Yes, sir. Well, I told her I'd try her. You know, sort of a probationer. Yes, sir. Worked out fine. End of the week, I put her on permanent. She did real well. A lot of guys got to coming in just to dance with her. Wouldn't have nobody else. Just Nadine. Harriet. Mm hmm That's how she met Max. I came in one night, fell for her, and they started to go together. I told him I didn't like the idea of the girls going out with the customers. Didn't make any difference to them, though. They kept right on seeing each other. That's this Bender fellow, huh? Yeah. Anyway, one night this soldier came in. He was took right away with Nadine. Asked her for a dance. Kept buying tickets all night so he could dance with her. Came back the next night. Same thing. That's Harriet, you mean? That's right. Made Max pretty sore, but there wasn't anything he could do about it. She wanted to be with the soldier. Yeah. Wasn't too long before she told me they was going to get married. Well, the word got around about that, and it really made Max hacked. Real hacked. Yes, sir. Him and the soldier, Shipley, they had a fight downstairs. One night after we closed, it was a real brawl. Cops and everything. Max really cleaned up on the soldier. Didn't do any good, though. What do you mean? Nadine told Max to stay away from her. Keep far away. 
Told them that her and the soldier was going to get married and that they were through. She met Max and her. Yeah. The soldier and Nadine got married a couple days later and she quit her job. Right after that, I heard he went overseas and Max was around trying to break things up. Didn't do no good, though. Nadine loved the soldier and she planned to stay with him. Yeah. Tried to talk to Max, tell him to stay out of it. Leave the girl alone. Didn't do no good. It was sure hacked. Said that she was his girl. Might take some time, but it'd get her for in and out on him. I figure he told her that, too. That's what she was afraid of. Don't blame her. Max told me that. I'd believe him. What's that? That he was going to kill her. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Lasnik. You've been a great help here. No trouble. Sure you don't want some of this pie? Mighty good. Twelve twenty-six p.m., Frank and I got back to the office. We had a complete list of the people who worked with Harriet Shipley. In checking them through R&I, we found that none of the 14 people on the list had arrest records. We did find a record for Max Bender, who'd been picked up on a charge of suspicion of burglary. However, according to the information on the report, he'd been released because of lack of evidence. We checked the log about the fight Lasnik had mentioned. We found that an F.I. card had been filed, but no arrest had been made. We talked with Sergeant Egenweiler and Sergeant Rubel, the officers who'd handled the burglary case. They told us that in their contacts with Bender, he was sullen and uncooperative. They went on to say that he'd been seen in the company of known criminals. They told us that in their opinion, they considered the man dangerous. They also said that they'd help us in finding him. Frank and I went ahead checking out the missing girl's friends and acquaintances. We talked to everybody on the list we'd gotten from Ernest Lasnik, but none of them could give us any idea where we might find the Shipley girl. Most of them, however, told us about the threat that Bender had made against her life, and they expressed the opinion that he was responsible for her disappearance. The next day, Thursday, August 19th. Did I tell you Harriet Shipley's mother-in-law called again this morning? No. What you want? Wanted to know how we were doing, what progress we've been able to make. Yeah. I filled her in on what we found. I didn't tell her about Bender. She said we thought we'd be able to find the girl. Mm-hmm. You talked to her when she made the original report, didn't you, Joe? Yeah, I did. Well, what do you think? What do you mean? Well, isn't there something a little off base to you? Well, I'm not sure I know what you're trying to get at. Well, it just seems to me that she doesn't care if we find her daughter-in-law or not. All she cares about is the kid. Yeah, I kind of got that idea myself. The way she talked, it doesn't sound like she and the girl got along too well, does it? Just seems like there's something she isn't telling us. I asked her this morning if she'd heard from her son, if he knew anything about where his wife might be. What'd she say to that? Told me she hasn't wanted to bother him, make him worry, wouldn't even give me his mailing address. Said she didn't want him alarmed unless there was a reason. The way I see it, his wife being gone is reason enough, isn't it? I told her that. She said our job was just to find the girl and the baby, that's all. Well, cooperation like that isn't going to make it any easier. We can only do so much if she isn't going to help us. It doesn't make a lot of sense, Joe. Her filing the report and then holding out information. Missing persons Friday. Oh, yeah, Rubel. Where? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What'd she say? Yeah. I see. What? Yeah, do you want to call the crime lab? Right. Yeah, we'll meet you out there. Yeah, right away. Well, they found where Bender was living. What do you mean, was? Checked out in July, about the same time the Shipley girl disappeared. The landlady hasn't seen him since. The guys came up with something else. Yeah. A couple of shirts for a little baby. Uh-huh. Blood stains all over him. <laughs> Got to the apartment where Bender had been living. The crew from the crime lab were there and they were going over the place. Sergeant Jay Allen told us that he'd have to run a precipitate test on the stains found on the clothing before he could tell whether or not they were of human origin. Frank left to call the office and a local and an APB were put out on Max Bender asking that he be picked up as a possible suspect. Also to have his card flagged in the record bureau. We talked to the landlady at the apartment building and she told us that Bender had left his apartment hurriedly one night about the middle of July. She told us no one had occupied the apartment since Bender left. We asked her to notify us immediately in the event the suspect returned. That afternoon, the picture of Harriet Shipley was telecast over the police program. We got several calls from citizens who said that they had seen the girl. One of the callers, a cab driver, told us that he'd driven a girl with a baby to a bus station during the month of July and that the girl had told him that she wanted to go to San Diego. The police in that city were alerted. 
Anything from San Diego? No, not yet. Missing persons, Friday. I see. Yes, we did. Where? You sure about that, are you? Okay. Right away. Let's go. What do you got? Shipley girl, they found her. from a nurse at the state mental hospital in Camarillo. She told me that they had a patient who resembled the photograph of the missing girl as televised on the police program. Frank and I left the office and drove out to the hospital. We talked to the nurse who was taking care of the sick girl. According to the information on her admission papers, she'd been committed on August 10th by her sister who gave the name Harriet Lavin. From personal effects and the scars on her wrists, we were reasonably sure of the identification. The nurse went on to tell us that the girl was undergoing treatment, but there was little hope for her recovery. She was unable to give us any information about the child. We got the address of Harriet Shipley's sister, checked out a trip car, and drove down to San Diego to talk to her. What do you want to know? Don't make no difference now. You can go back and tell her that it's too late. Way too late. Tell who? Mrs. Shipley, Harriet's mother-in-law. You go back and tell her that she done it good. There ain't nothing left to do to Harriet. It's all been done. Tell her that. We don't work for Miss Shipley. We're trying to find out what happened to your sister and the baby. Who asked you to find out in the first place? Was her, wasn't it? Or wasn't she the one? She filed the report. That's what I mean. Will you go back and tell her that there's nothing more she can do to Harriet. Or the baby. Or to Big Perry. Where is the baby? He's not here. Do you know where he is? Yes. But I ain't gonna tell you. I ain't gonna tell anybody. I promised Harriet I wouldn't. And I'm gonna keep it. Look, Miss Lavin, we don't want to hurt your sister. We're just trying to get at the truth here. Now, maybe you better tell us what you know. You ain't doing this for old Mrs. Shipley? No, ma'am. All right, then. I'll, I'll tell you. But not for her. I wouldn't give her the right time of day. She's the one who did it, the whole thing. You can lay it right at her feet. All right, you want to tell us? Well, since they got married, she's been giving the kids trouble. Right from the first. First time she heard about it. Said Harriet wasn't good enough for her son. Said Harriet was, was cheap. Didn't make any difference to the kids. They were in love. So they got married. I see. As soon as Big Perry went overseas, she started on Harriet to get an annulment. All the time writing her letters, telling her how cheap she was, and, and that if she really loved Perry, she'd let him go. Then she found out about the baby, and then she started saying how they should get a divorce. Does Harriet's husband know about this? Sure, knew it all along. He didn't like it, told his mother to stay out of their lives, kept telling her. Didn't do no good. Then Harriet got the wire. The one where it said that Big Perry was dead. Almost killed her. They was really in love. It's not when you see something like them, too. Real love. The kind you live, not, not the kind you talk about. Yeah. Oh, well, one night, right after she got the wire, she got a phone call from San Francisco, from old Mrs. Shipley. She told Harriet that she was going to court to take the baby away from her. Said that she could prove that Harriet wasn't a good mother and she didn't deserve to have the baby. Was your sister living here at the time? No, but she'd come down every weekend. There was a guy up in L.A. that was giving her trouble. A fellow named uh, Bender, I think. He was with her when she tried to kill herself. He ran out so he wouldn't get mixed up in it. He was always giving Harriet trouble, so she left one night to get away from him and from old Mrs. Shipley. She came here and said that she just wanted to be left alone with her baby. That's not a lot to ask, is it? Just to be left alone? No, ma'am. It was old Mrs. Shipley. She just wouldn't let Harriet alone. Kept after her, saying how she was going to take the baby away. How Harriet was a, an unfit mother. It got on her mind. Finally, wasn't much else she was thinking about, but how to keep that baby. Went out walking one night. Took the baby with her. Rained. Rained hard. Guess the baby took cold. Anyway, the next day he came down with a bad fever. A couple days later, he was, he was dead. Only lived nine weeks, and he was dead. All right, would you go on, please? Harry didn't, didn't say anything. 
didn't do nothing but just stare at the wall. She didn't even cry. Just sat there and looked at that wall. And all of a sudden, she just went to pieces. I called the doctor. He said it was a breakdown. Said I should have her committed. That's what I did. I went up to see her. I'm her sister. And she didn't even know me. So you... You just tell old Mrs. Shipley how she did. Just tell her what she did to my sister. Tell her how the baby's dead, and she finally got what she wanted. Because now Harriet hasn't got the baby. But Buddy's got him. p.m. We got back to Los Angeles and we went directly to the hotel where Mrs. Shipley was staying. Good evening, Sergeant Friday. Officer Smith, come in. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I was just having a drink. Could I fix you one? No, thank you. How about you, Mr. Smith? No, thank you. You don't mind if I go ahead? Please do. Uh, there's another chair over there, Sergeant. No, thanks. I'd rather stand. The desk clerk said it's important. Yes, ma'am, it is. Have you found my daughter-in-law? Yes, ma'am, we have. And the baby, where is he? Is he still with her? No, ma'am, he's not. Well, where is he? Miss Shipley, your daughter-in-law is a pretty sick girl. Oh? She's in the state hospital at Camarillo. Camarillo? Yes, ma'am. That's a mental hospital, isn't it? That's right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but then I always knew she wasn't very stable. Miss Shipley, why didn't you tell us your son was dead? I didn't think it had any bearing on the case. What difference does it make? You don't seem very interested in his wife, either. I'm going to be honest with you, Sergeant. I'm not in the least interested in what she does or where she is. I never did feel that she was the right girl for my son, never. When the baby was born, I tried to go along with it. Tried to be nice to her. She wouldn't have it. She wouldn't even be friendly. She poisoned my son, turned him against me. She's a terrible woman. Just terrible. And whatever has happened to her is exactly what she's got coming. Naturally, I'm sorry it's the way it is, but there's nothing I can do. All I'm interested in right now is my grandson. I want him. And if I have to go to court to get him, then I'll do it that way. That won't be necessary, ma'am. Well, where is he? I'd like to go and get him now that Perry's wife can't take care of him. He's dead, ma'am. If this is some kind of a joke that you're making up to help my daughter-in-law keep him, it won't work. No, ma'am, it's no joke. It's the truth. He died in the hospital down in San Diego. <laughs> it's not right. It's not right. She did this hurt. She did it to get even with me. I know she did. I'm sorry, Miss Shipley. I wish there was something we could do. Oh, no, you're not. You're just like the rest of them. There's no one else to consider in this mess. Just her. What about the baby? On Saturday, August 21st, a meeting was held in the Captain of Homicide's office, Los Angeles Police Department. In a moment, the results of that meeting.
At a meeting held in Captain Larman's office, it was determined that no criminal act had taken place. 